Welcome to the channel. I'm going to be doing some fermented chilies and we're going to be smoking some of these. I've got an old fire brigade colleague of mine, Mark, who's come over, who's heavily into fermenting and all things chili. And you're going to take me through this process. I'll certainly do my best, yeah. So talk to me a little bit about what we've got here. So uh, over the past few days, I've been just experimenting with uh, different types of oils and infusing them and finding different ways of infusing them with chilies and uh, other bits and bobs. So we've got star anise in there. We've got dehydrated uh, rosemary in there, um, cumin seeds, black peppercorns. So it's just basically different ways to add flavor to different types of sources and different uh, different types of oils rather and different oils also have different flavors to them so that's nice you can get you can get the heat from that yeah there is an issue with um, infusing herbs in oil around e coli isn't there and other pathogens that might sit on the surface of those items so how do you get around that so i get around that by i dehydrate everything before it goes in there so i'll dehydrate the chilies they're my own chilies that i've grown this year so i'll dehydrate those the uh, rosemary that went in is dehydrated as well. Mm. So it's all dehydrated before it goes in. Then you obviously add the, the dry uh, herbs and spices that go in, so there's gonna be no problem with those. Okay. And then when I put them in the bag to infuse them, I'll put them in a, a bag like this, which we're gonna talk about a bit more later. Yeah. When I put them in those bags, I will heat them overnight to about 70 degrees. So that'll kill any So that kills any pathogens there. that haven't been killed already. So it's like a double way of um, ensuring the food safety. That's lovely, that's a nice one. Yeah. What else have we got here? So we've also uh, got some rapeseed oil. You can see the, the color of that, that was filtered out. So the rapeseed was like a... And that's had chili infused into it? Yeah, it's had the same sort <laughs> There's a recurring thing Everything is chili, <laughs> yeah, I do like chilies. Okay, let's try a bit of that. And that'd be good to cook with, or maybe... Yeah, maybe that's a pasta really nice, and bit. you're not losing the mildness of that oil, are you? That's yeah. still there. Yeah, that's got some... It's like a, a warmth at the end of it, isn't it? There's not yeah. a great deal of heat in that. And what one is particularly nice is the sesame oil, because sesame is a very strong oil anyway, nice rounded flavor, nice just... warm flavor to it. But that's been added with the same same, same stuff that's in here. So yeah. that's um, cardamom, peppers, uh, star anise is in there as well. And basically what I'll do is I will crush them all up, I'll put them in the bag, you I add the oil, it. and I put them in a dehumidifier, a fan dehumidifier. Okay and I'll warm them at least just over, overnight. 16 hours is about maximum. Wow, so those are the oils. Yep. What have we got here? So- These are sauces, aren't they? What originally got me into all this stuff was fermenting. It was a bit of a lockdown project, fermenting of chili sauces. I've always liked chili sauces. It smells amazing, like that's good. Yeah, good flavors to them. So I started experimenting with different ways to make chili sauces. And then what it's evolved around to is using the bag method using a vacuum sealer bag. It cuts out all of the nonsense. It makes it so much easier to do. So the traditional way of doing this would be of um, putting all your ingredients together into a container of some sort. That's right, similar to what you'd be doing with homebrew. So you chop your container, uh, you chop all your, uh, all your ingredients, you put whatever you want in it really. Anything from, you can do fruit with it, you can do vegetables, you can do chilies, all sorts. You add them all up, chop them down, and then by volume, you can either put two or three percent, or you put them in a brine. Usually right. people put them in a brine. Okay. So the brine goes in a, in a little fermenting chamber with an airlock on the top. Yeah. And then it starts to ferment away. On the, the skin of just about everything is lactobacillus bacteria. Right. And the lactobacillus bacteria eats the, uh, the sugars okay. that, that's in, in all the fructose that's in here. Right. And as it eats those, it produces carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is a you can see carbon dioxide forming in, in this part of the bag here yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, so that's gassing off. So those bubbles of carbon dioxide create an anaerobic um, atmosphere inside, and that stops all the nasties from growing as well. Okay. So you've got all the sugars being eaten, and it's the sugars that rot, and then you've got all the oxygen you're being expelled, and CO2 And forming. this is a one of those standard roll plastic bags that's in a right. vacuum sealer food saver machine, isn't it? That's right. So Nice to see you keep records on those as well. Yeah, because if you do loads of them, 
Now I've got my fermentation log over here. If you don't keep a fermentation log... <laughs> Man with a book. <laughs> exactly that. If you don't keep a fermentation log, you've got no idea what's going on. So yeah, if you get yeah, a really yeah. nice one, because I'm very pleased with this one, this tastes great. Yeah, let's have a little go on that one. I just had a, a touch off camera, but I just wanted to try that. Very ketchupy. Yep. But a really nice rounded flavour. More flavour than heat in that, I yep, would say. It's very mild chilli, that one. That's nice. So that would be number nine. So you've identified that. So I would go into my fermentation log. Okay. I'm going to scribble everything. That's really nice. Mix number nine. So I made that in June of this year. Right. And that was uh, 345 grams of mild chilli, 31 grams of garlic, and then 2% of that is salt. So 2% by volume. Right. Which should all be chopped up, put in a bag like this, and then sealed. Brilliant. So if, the, if there's a lot of sugar in the chilies, what happens is that the bags will blow up and they'll get really quite large. So all you do is you nip the corner of them, make sure you push it all down again. Okay. You'll so, nip the corner, yeah. burp it, and then reseal it so again. So that means literally expelling get any rid. excess gas in there. So all you the got... CO2 in there will be got rid of. You don't then... want a balloon. No, because up. if you leave it for long enough, it will explode in your, your fermentation chamber. Excellent. And we all love that, don't we? Yeah. It smells okay, good. So you can see that that's beginning to sort of get a little bit of volume in there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be smoking some of the chilies to give an additional sort of flavour layer. How are we going to do that? I'm, I mean, I've, I know how I'm planning on doing it, but essentially what I'm looking at doing is putting some raw chilies in my hot smoker and only really keeping them in there for say about five, 10 minutes at the most. Yep. And then just getting some smoke onto the surface and, and then putting them in the bag. Will that cause an issue? As we spoke about earlier, you've got lactobacillus on the, on the outside of this, and it's the lactobacillus uh, bacteria that works. It eats all of the sugars. If you put this into a smoker, it will kill all the lactobacillus. If you dry these, right. it kills all the lactobacillus, so it won't ferment. Right, right, right. So you can do that for flavour, but you also have to add at least 50% by volume of fresh ingredient as well. Okay. Otherwise, it won't work. So essentially, if we're going to smoke this, we'll only do half of those. Exactly that, yeah. Fine, that's fair enough. Should we crack on? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's get on with it. So I guess the first thing is, um, if we get the smoker set up, if you want to take half of those chilies and just give them a rough chop, and uh, we can kind of go from there, really. How are you doing them? Do you want them split down, or you want them chopped completely? Either or, whichever's easiest. That's fine. Knife there. Let's do it. This is all nicely done. So they've all been split. We've also added a little bit of garlic to this. Yep. Um, and I've got some hickory chips here. Nice so strong flavour. Nice strong flavour. And all we need is about two tablespoons of those chips. And we'll just pat them down in the bottom. And I always keep them centred over where the flame is going to go. Mm -hmm. What you find, some people just put them all over the base and the edge bits don't get burnt at all. So. I just make sure that that goes in the centre where the flame is and you just get the smoke, you know. Coming. How long are we going to be uh, smoking these for then? Probably no more, uh, well, until that smoke's gone. So probably no more than about five minutes. And uh, what temperature is that going to get up to it's roughly? It's probably going to go above 100 in here, okay. 100 Celsius. So we want to make sure that that's all going to fit in there. So we can press it down. Slide the old lid on, just so as we've got the material in the same place as the uh, smoke. Yep. That's all that counts. Right, that is ready to go onto the hot smoker, and obviously because of the nature of what we're doing, we'll do that outside. Excellent. Let's cool. do it. Okay, that's on. sits on there like that and we'll let that go for a few minutes. Right, let's 
take a quick look at this, see how we're doing. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, okay. I think that's pretty much done now. We'll just turn that off. And let that do its thing. Okay, let's open this up. And we'll just let that cool down. Yeah, look at all that smoky goodness on there. They're nice. So what we need to do is we need to, um, first of all, cleanliness. Washing okay. our hands, we need to wash our hands thoroughly. Okay. All the utensils that we're gonna be doing from now on need to be sterilized as well and sanitized. Right. So we do have some sanitizer, which is over there in the jar. I'll get that in a minute. And the reason for that is that you don't wanna be going, I don't know, a month or longer with the fermentation to go back to the bag and find out it's full of mold or green stuff. It's just a complete yeah. waste of time. So sanitization is really important at this stage that everything, that all the utensils, everything has to be done. Okay, that so makes sense. We will do that and then we weigh everything that we've got that's going in. And then we will work out as a percentage of the, 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 um, the salt that we're gonna put in with it. We don't use table salt for this. Table salt will just stop the fermentation. Okay. So, so this is PDV salt, pure dried vacuum salt. It's got no other additives other than an anti-caking agent, but that's that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's all we need for that. Okay. And we'll do two to three percent of volume of the uh, of the total things that we're going to ferment. Great. We'll so, put them through the NutriBullet. Yeah. Down into a mash, and then we'll put them straight into a bag. Okay. Some people will sanitize the inside of the bag. If people want to do that, they can do. I've never found the need to do that. Right. Uh, but I suppose it's extra safe. And then we will vacuum seal it and then we'll, it's done. Okay, so. great. Let's get on with that then. So we've got our bag ready. Um, we've sanitized our hands and um, there's our sanitizer for the kit that we're gonna be uh, getting ready in a minute. What's the next stage we need to do? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get um, all of the ingredients that we're gonna put into the bag for the fermentation, we're gonna weigh them. Okay. And then we will work out two to 3% of the volume of that we will add as, uh, as the salt. Okay, so you need a bowl to weigh those in. Yeah, and everything that comes that into contact can... with the, the ingredients now has to be sanitized. Okay, so get me some blue cloth on that bowl. I'll, do, okay. I'll be your um, sous chef. Sanitize that, that's cool. You can do these ones. Okay. You let that just sit on that for a little bit. Yeah, just do that. And then we'll rinse those in a second. That's so cool. Do the lip. Lovely job, lip. Because it's pointless going all the way down to the end of ferment to find out it's all rotten at the end of it. Yeah, you don't want it smelling like your cat's bits. Exactly. Yeah, sure, okay, cool. Now you also talked a little bit about shelf stability when this is actually fermented and pH, which I think is the acidity level. Lower the pH, the higher the acidity. Yeah. So what you want for a shelf stable source is a pH of 4.6 or lower. Anything above that, it's not really shelf stable. So there was a, the source that I did yesterday, which is that one there has a pH of 3.7, so that will be okay, shelf that's stable. that's very, very low, very acidic. It is. But that means that it lasts a long time, it's gonna be safe for people to eat. Yeah, that will sit on your shelf for two years easily without any okay, problems at brilliant. all, so like even for refrigerating it. It's funny, there are quite a few crossovers between charcuterie and um, this sort of process because you're, you're leaving stuff for a while to do its thing. Exactly. And pH in charcuterie is incredibly important. And funnily enough, anything below four it's usually considered shelf stable. Well, it's all the old ways of preparing and uh, using food to last over the winter. Anything that was going to rot would have a pH that would be higher because it wouldn't be clean as well. Yeah, the pH and we've, wouldn't kill we've it. added a bit of science to it as well now. Haven't exactly. We? So that. That we can actually measure these things so that we can at attain consistency. With the adjusting of the pHs with the sources like this as well, it's the amount of vinegar that you would add at the end and the type of vinegar. So you have right. to when you got the when it's ready. You'd have to check the profile of the fermentation and think what's going to go well with this. Is it going to be 
this is going to be a, you want something a bit sweeter or do you want something like an apple cider vinegar with it or would you like uh, white wine vinegar or just a straight normal distilled vinegar so like a spirit vinegar yeah. or something yeah so if you add the more of that you add the acidity raises the ph drops but also you change the flavor of what you're going to be eating as well okay brilliant right i'll rinse these in water let me rinse this as well and um what we can do then is you can weigh all the ingredients yeah. on this. I'll get you some scales. And also what's important now is that these are cool because if we added these and they were too warm and we added those to those that would kill the lactobacillus bacteria which we've already given these a rinse so but that would kill the lactobacillus on there and you wouldn't get a fermentation at okay. all. Okay so that's quite cool at the moment isn't it? Yeah nice and cool nice you and can cool. touch it. Okay so I'll zero those for you. Okay. Let me... So I'll rinse this lot and you can... Put that on and tear it again. Yeah, absolutely. Zero that off. There we go. So we will add everything. But what might be quite interesting is when we're doing a fermentation log on this, Yeah. we will weigh how much of it was smoked and then we'll weigh how much of it is fresh. So we've got records that if we want to if the fermentation turns out to be something really quite nice, you can replicate it at a later date. Perfect. So that sounds we will, about as scientific as we want to get. I was going to tip those in, but I didn't want to tip it in with no, the, uh, fine. the burnt <laughs> wood chips, okay. which would not be a good flavour. We got the rest of them. Yeah. Nice bit of toasty guy. Yeah, look at them, they're lovely. Yeah, lovely, lovely. lovely. And the smells from this are okay, really quite us, nice. Uh, give us your used stuff, I'll get rid of that. So I will start a new page for those. And this is going to be mix or mash number okay. 11. And that is 247 grams of product. Right. Fantastic. Excellent. And then we'll add the... So shall I tar it again? No, no, leave it as... Uh, no, actually, yeah. yeah and then we can it. just add them up at yeah, the end. Yeah, because we are simple, thick firemen, so... Ah, oh, should have waited for that to uh, do its thing. There we go. Take take those out again. You can, and can see it. which they yeah, are. Yeah, I think we can work out which ones were which. Don't worry, we'll cut this again. <laughs> Don't! Don't. I think that's it. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, let me... Okay, put the rest in. So we'll add the rest, and these come to... Number 11. There was a bit of a manky one there, so I'm not gonna put that one in. Okay. Because if you put something in that's a bit ropey, okay, it'll spoil your ferment. 294 grams there, Mark. 294. Okay. So we'll add them up, then we'll do 2% or three, between 2 and 3% 3 of the volume. 3% of 541 grams. 16 grams. 16 grams of salt. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good to me. Blender. And all we do now is we'll add it all together and mash it up. Okay, so should we put the salt in here? Uh, put the salt in last, I think. Okay, so we want to pop those in there and then we'll add the salt. And they may not all go in in one bit, but we can do a couple of bits. Yeah, we? sure. Push them down a little bit, put the salt in now on top of that. Okay. Let's bring that in 
front and centre. So that's on now. All we need to do is just press it down. about did it no okay it's just so the initial thing and then when it starts getting to be a wet mix it's uh it's a lot better <laughs> oh god yeah I that is powerful i wouldn't do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks for the warning <laughs> you watched me do that yeah. also the thing so you've got the the fumes, <laughs> oh, the fumes yeah, come man. off there which are quite strong <laughs> also if you're touching uh, it wash your hands afterwards as well oh, because well. if you're touching any sensitive parts of your body it can be um I'll let you do that. Painful. <laughs> not yours, not mine, obviously. <laughs> right, there's the last one. <laughs> that came out wrong, didn't it? <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> wow, that didn't take long at all, did it? No. You open it. It's <laughs> ready to ferment. Just gonna give my hands a quick wash. Yeah, sure. Cheers, right? Okay, that's amazing. Right, we need the bag, which is uh, yonder. We'll we'll get some we'll get some bits off that. I think. What do you reckon? It smells quite nice. It does, doesn't it? I'm scared to smell it now. Yeah, I want to try and get as much of this as possible. God, that's hurting my eyes from here, you know. Yeah. So at this stage, you can add anything else you want in here. So some people will do um, mango can go in there, um, pears, pineapples. Okay. But the more things you have with sugar that go into it, the more the bag will blow up because the lactobacillus will it eat the sugars it. yeah and then it produces carbon dioxide okay do you want to just pop that in there and we'll it makes it so much easier isn't it there's very little handling involved yeah and as i said before some people sanitize the inside of the bags i've never done it but to be safe i suppose you could do that couldn't you i guess so i mean i'm i'm guessing that those bags will be um, pretty food safe anyway, yeah, don't they? Yeah, nothing organic to inside them. Has no. It? Well, I'll just get a little bit of this mop up here. I don't really want to be... Uh... God, this, you can really smell. That's the thing the, with the cheese, isn't it? On it. Yeah, you can. Yeah. That is so powerful. In fact, that's probably the more dominant flavour. That's ridiculous. The hickory smell is quite strong. Just wipe it on the inside of the bag, Mark. I think that's probably enough now. What I might do after we finish this, I might just tr try that just to see what the, the flavours are like. A little <laughs> dab, it's going to be very strong. Brave man. But the smells are very different to what you'd normally have. That's amazing. Yeah. And then all we do is we vacuum this. Yeah, so we put it on moist, in the moist um, setting. Right, this doesn't have a moist setting, so I've got a little hack for that. Okay. So we just pop it in as we would normally. Uh, bring it down a bit so that it misses there. Right, that's perfect. Just there. And basically we do a manual. So... We... Right, that. We might have to do this again. So the benefit of doing it this way is that you've taken a lot of the, 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 the air, the oxygen, out of the system as it is. There we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to wipe the inside of that lip because can you see there, there's a little bit that's just come through. Yeah. But if you look at the seal, the seal's good. Yeah. Right, so let's just do that. Yeah, this doesn't have a wet setting, but if you stop it before the moisture gets drawn out, you can kind of get away with it. Obviously, it's advantageous if you're going to do this to have a vacuum machine with a wet setting, obviously. Yeah. Um, now, 
I would say that looks pretty good, but I'll give it just another another seal right next to it. Hold that there for us, Mark, if you would. Okay. We'll just let that run its course. Looks good. Okay, cool. So, so the, the advantage of having a long neck on this as well is that this probably won't blow up an awful lot because there's not a lot of sugars in, in right. what we've just um, <clears throat> we've just added to the bag as, as the mash. But if you added something like pears, peaches, anything that you want to add to this, it would blow up a lot, an awful lot more. So what we would then do is we'd nick the corner. Expel any extra Yep, and then we'd reseal it again. And, and you can do that as many it. times as you want. That's the advantage of having a long neck on the bag. Yeah, brilliant. And all you've got to do when you reseal is just make sure that that's clean. Yep. Excellent. And as you did there, cleaning that, the excess moisture out of there, it's quite important because that would rot anyway. That would be no good in no time. Okay, so we have a label on there. Even better. Let me grab you a pen. What do we need to put on there? So we would do, um, it has to tally with what's in your fermentation log. So this is mix 11 for me. And we'll do the date. What is today's date? 19th. So that's 19th of the 10th, 2020. Perfect. And that's all we need really. So this will now go into my fermentation chamber at home, which is all, all it is, is a, is a converted fridge that keeps the temperature inside the fridge at the optimum range for fermentation for the lactobacillus to thrive. So that's what, between it. four and six degrees Celsius? No, it would be between 19 degrees centigrade. Oh really? Yeah, so it's that high warmer. for those. Yeah, right, it's that high. Okay. That's, the, that's what the bacteria, uh, lactobacillus bacteria inside there will produce it. The, the so I guess any rate. lower than that, you, your activity level is going to be so low, yeah, it's and just it, not going to... It wouldn't, it would in. take so long to do mm. it. And anything higher, again, it, would, it wouldn't be optimum for the bacteria inside. Mm. So that will just sit in there and I will check it Make sure it's not blowing up, make sure nothing untowards is going up. It's so lovely, isn't it? You can see all those little black burnt bits there. Yeah. That's great. And also, if you compare it to the one that we did the other day, well, this is done so last it's month. It's changed colour dramatically, hasn't it? I mean, were, were they pretty similar They were colours? quite similar as well, but I think I've got pear in with this as well. Okay. But you can see where they, the CO2 is forming inside. And I've opened this bag uh, once already just to dispel anything and to add extra because that's the advantage of this as well you can add extra mash into the uh, into the mix as well so long as everything's sterilized and sanitized really, you've got no problem can't really say how important that is because it's yeah yeah so you can see it all blown up here co2 everywhere and that's what will start to appear in this in the next couple of days you've got the the bits of air that we haven't got out of the bag which isn't a problem at all but you'll start to see more of them appearing more as it and then this will expand so just to summarize this now goes into a chamber, held at around about 19 degrees Celsius, yep. and it'll keep that temperature for around about a month. Yep. Check it every few days to make sure it's not turning into a balloon, and burp it when it needs to be burped, get yep. rid of, getting rid of any extra gases, and then this will be ready in about a month. Yep. Fantastic. And then we and can- this is what we get at the end of it. Yeah, then we can process it. What we'll do is we'll check the flavor profiles, and we'll see what it turns out like. I've done this one yesterday, it's a little bit harsh for me. So what I will probably do that is I will add fruit to that. This hasn't been cooked, this is just a straight fermentation. Now if I add fruit to this one, it will start to ferment again because the lactobacillus inside it will then start eating the, the, the fructose in the fruit and it will start expanding. So to make it bottle stable, that needs to be heat treated It needs to be heat treated afterwards. To kill any of that lactobacillus. Exactly that. And Fantastic. this one is, um, I've added a few bits and bobs onto that one. And that's the nicest one I think I've done. Mm. Um, that was mild chilies and cardamom pods at the end of it. Oh, and it just really works. Mm. Fantastic. Well, I can't wait to taste this. Obviously, because it's got smoky flavors in it, that's sort of my yeah. bag. Yeah. But um, I'm really interested to see how this turns out because I've never I've done loads of fermentations, but I've never done it with, um, with the smoking. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put this video up before this is ready, Yeah. okay? And then what we'll do is we'll do a supplemental video when you can come over and we can taste this. Yeah, looking forward to it. And then we can it. play around with that and we can put some additional bits and pieces in it if the taste isn't exactly how you'd like it. Yeah. 
And we'll also do a pH test on it as well, because I've got my own pH meter too. Hmm. So that, that will be of great interest to people. And I'll bring a selection of, uh, you've probably got a selection of vinegars as well, so we can do all sorts of different things. I do. Well, them. I've got my own apple cider vinegar. It was a failed cider project, but it turned into the most amazing cider vinegar. So well, that would be we, quite interesting yeah, to, to use, use with this that. then. Hmm. Great. And also, we can also add any, any um, spices at the end. I've always found that with this one, cardamom works really well. Excellent. So we just grind some cardamom down and add it to it and go from there. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. I no, appreciate it. It's been really well, interesting. I hope, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. Do uh, leave your comments in the comment section if you do have any questions. And uh, if I can't answer them, I'll certainly pass them on to Mark, who can do that for us. Uh, in the meantime, take care, folks. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye. And just a quick update, Mark took that bag of chilli sauce home with him and he popped it into his fermenting chamber. Now this chamber is held at around about 20 degrees Celsius and that's going to be sitting in there for around about four weeks. And we'll see it when it's done.